So we'll be talking about the identity, governance, privacy, and compliance, right? So we'll be just seeing, you know, we'll be starting with the identity service first. So always, I think uh, many of you guys have already cleared the security or the CISSP, okay? Already, you guys are pretty much familiar said that what is going to be the difference between the your authentication and authorization. So simply guys the method of identifying a person is going to be known as the authentication, right? If I am at the door of my organization, there is a security guard and he's just asking me that who are you? So what I'm showing I'm showing him my ID card. Right then I'm tapping it on the door, right? Which is I uh, let's just say RFID enabled card that I am having and it is opening for me So that is going to prove that I am the authorized person here He will be just matching my photos my face. Let's just say that is a very new security guard in the place, right? So he'll be just checking those kind of thing So identifying a person or a service seeking access to your resources that will be your authentication Right, that is authentication and you have to check that whether those credentials are legitimate or not now, that identity that he is providing is actually belonging to your database or not right that's the one thing now let's just say that I just enter into the my office right so are they directly going to hand over to me that let's just say that go and sit on the CEO chair accesses system right no they have to check my authorization so authentication is only the process of verifying this person. So they verify this person. Okay. Yes, you are allowed now you can come inside right now after this where you will be going right? So let's just say there are different different departments office separated by different rooms Right. this is the security team IT team front desk team right user the customer service team right? So where I am will be going what is my ID my authentication will be associated with the authorization now authenticated person what kind of access I am having right can I access the uh, security team you know, or I can access the your particular IT team or the compliance team or the you know, front uh, customer service team where I am going to fit that is going to depend on my authorization what permissions I have you know? so same thing so you will be entering your username password if there is multi-factor authentication you will be just going through either authenticator app or email or the SMS right or call after that I am verified what I can access right so there are resource multiple resource like VM right my web app there is my container now once you find out that I am authorized person so what I can access out of all these things so that will be part of your authorization so in Azure, we can actually enable your multi-factor authentication. So, you know, again, the authentication is again going to have the few things, right? More element like something you know right? that is going to be your password, something you possess, right? Or like a card, a token, or something like that, right? And then something you are. So, something you are means your biometrics, right? That you can't change. Okay, at this particular part. Okay, so something you are. Who who am I you know, credentials and all those kind of thing my fingerprint those are the actually things and you can enable these kind of you know uh, either through you know, sending a OTP to your email or sending a particular OTP through the SMS or calling on a number or you can have your you know, uh, authenticator app right and the Azure is not limited to only one app so you can use either Google Authenticator app. You can add your account there your Microsoft Authenticator app Okay, or any other Authenticator app if you are having so your Authenticator app will be generating a OTP in there and you know allowing you the access So that's the one thing right just like we are having the active directories on the organizations We are having the Azure Active Directory on the cloud base as well. So it will be keeping this Active Directory is going to keep all the resources, right? All the users, the group, right? All the different features that we generally have with the AD. Okay, it is going to allow you the single sign-on. And what is single sign-on? That I am logging in once. That based on that, I don't need to log in with to use other services provided by the Azure Cloud. So my one identity is enough to access the all the different services where I am authenticated to you know, authorized to okay so whatever I am allowed to use I can use those services without re-signing myself again and again right you can do the device management that what device if I am having an account 
so i can actually verify my device there as well i can you know attach my device to the particular account so that i don't have to do the authentication on that device again and again i can perform the application management as well in that particular part there are a lot of features like passwordless signing you know as uh, the self service password reset so you know you don't need to contact the administrator again and again that i forgot my password so all those features are enabled by your active directory right and guys you need to purchase a license based to uh, there are few features like enterprise state roaming okay there is particular feature which we call the enterprise state roaming so what is going to happen in this particular one let's just say that i am having a device i am having a hp device right i connected my device to my ad azure ad i can synchronize all my settings to that particular device now next time i am changing my device okay i am just going with the let's just say i purchase a macbook i log in there you know and i am just adding my account next time what i need to do when i'll be logging the all my settings from my last machine is going to be synchronized on this enterprise state roaming right on my azure active directory and when i just have a new particular system let's say macbook all those settings will be applied on this particular machine as well so that is the kind of thing which we call the enterprise state roaming and these kind of feature this one or your so, self service sign self service password reset reset for that you have to purchase a separate license which is your premium p2 license okay so you have to purchase that license separately then you can use such features as well so that just an idea although we talk about this in the azure administration course but just to give you the fair idea that you can have much more features as well right you can allow conditional access to only a particular user to a group okay based on the ip network range or a location right to a specific device to a specific application and even your ad you know uh, your microsoft ad azure ad it can do the risk detection so if anyone having the account right on the azure try one thing guys install the tor browser and if you have enabled the security of this risk detection there so what it is going to do it is going to mark your login as suspicious if you are logging with the tor browser simply right if you are using tor browser to log in right it will be marking that your sign in attempt as the malicious itself so you can check that as well so you know it has the all the ai built in ai to check those kind of things right so as you can see this particular picture is showing that you can actually use different signals and signals are that which through which device you are logging in what is your location what are the credential you are using right using which application you are actually accessing this thing right and all the real time tasks like you know using the browser and all those kind of thing right if you try to send some malicious you know, data it will be checked again you know, every access attempt going to be checked right that whether or not it required a multi factor authentication whether it required to block that access or allow that access so if these two condition passed you can have access to your apps and the data itself right now we'll be talking about the few of the governance methodology and before that let me just show you the your active directory how it look like on your portal itself so let me just quickly jump into the place jumping into the home okay i don't see it here so here if i go to the azure active directory so this is my directory here so i don't have uh, still i haven't activated that premium p2 account right now so you know there you can create the different user although you will see only one user right now then again you know you can see deleted user password reset if i want to do when this person done the sign ins right all the things uh, last seven day okay so all these things kind of things you can see all the things like date request id user application status ip address location okay all these kind of thing you can always check that you know uh, that what this person was doing right this is only about the users you can have the grade you can create new users you can create new directories as well you can actually implement your custom domain as well so right now if i just try to add any user if i go to the user and i create a new user right now that what i, have, I am getting i am getting this particular my tenant uh, my directory name in here that rishabh kotial uh, let's just say that i want to register shivkant here so shivkant at the rate rishabh kotial at the outlook right so if i want to attach my custom domain here so i can add that one as well 
in this particular part just to synchronize it with the on-premise as well so you can synchronize uh, between the on-prem and your azure ad directory itself right so that is the one thing that you also have so there are a lot of feature right so if i just go to the password reset part so here i have service which is self-service password reset but for this i need to have that premium p2 account right so this is my actually the azure active directory that i am having okay now again let me just go back to the part where we were talking about the RBAC and the people who are working with the identity and access management they will be pretty much familiar with the RBAC right it is most commonly used methodology that is out there right and this RBAC is actually going to provide me a very fine grained access management so your users they will be just refer they will be just authenticating themselves first apps user group they will be authenticating themselves through the particular azure active directory now that directory will be checking it against the subscription that whether or not i am allowed to have access to the subscription right and this subscription can have multiple resource group now you know you can implement the rbac on the resource group level itself or on to the resource itself right you can define that only this user can use this resource whether it is the reader okay what is his role reader or he is a contributor or he is the owner of that particular resource so these kind of role you can give to the particular user okay and then based on that it will be checked against the resource that well, whether or not this user is allowed to have access right that kind of fine grain level of access management we can see so again i'll be showing you this one as well quickly then we have the resource lock right so if someone is accidentally deleting your source and you don't want that so for that what you can do you can use the locks right there are two type of lock cannot delete and read only so when you implement cannot delete so person can read it the persons can you know update it but they cannot delete it when you implement the read only lock you can read it but you can't even update it you can't even delete it so if i have a vm right virtual machine and i have implemented this read only lock to this so i can see this you know this is running i can see that this is running i can you know that's fine i can read all its stat but if i try to stop it it is going to be say that the your activity failed why because i don't have permission to update it right so it is going to be failed right even i cannot delete that particular vm at this point right so this is your resource lock it is going to help you then we are having something which is called tags so now each resource each group can have tags which will be having two value okay one is the name and another is value so it is just you know very good you know it is kind of metadata about those resource and helpful when you organize you want to organize your particular resources like i want to check that all the you know uh, my i am having the development team right so let's just say the name uh, name is the development right and there could be the thing like the development team is working on the one team is working on the web app one another on the web app two so what i i can do i can define these tags for the your each resource so when i will be defining this so there will be the distinct you know definition so whenever i will be searching that i have to search a resource which belong to the developer group or developer team and which value is web app 2 so which is working on the web application 2 so by doing this i can refine all my data i will be having all the resource in front of me which is having this metadata right which is belonging to a particular developer group and they are working on the web app 2 so like here they are just saying you know, things like owner who is owner joe department marketing environment production so this kind of pair we all always have the name and value pair then there is policies you can implement policies on the complete resource group on the subscription itself right so you know that kind of thing you can have so you can apply the policy like what will be the on the higher level what kind of policy you want to enforce right you are going to force the policies which will make sure that you are you know, compliance ready right you are following all the compliance all the laws right so that kind of thing you can implement through the policies itself okay these are the few things that we are having 
and if we look into the privacy and compliance and data protection standard now so azure is promising that you know they are secure by design each vm are secure you know they are going to be committed towards the ensuring the privacy okay they are going to follow the compliance and law and actually you can see all these you know their compliance terms and requirements 